Welcome to another sermon from the Lewis Church of Christ. And now, here's Chip. Welcome to our Good Friday service. Uh, my name's Chip Vicchio. I'm the worship leader here, and, and a couple times a year I get to preach, so I'm excited because Good Friday, Christmas Eve, that's about it. Uh, I do most of my preaching through lyrics, you know, which is really preaching and teaching. So, um, but I don't get a chance to do this much, so I'm, I'm excited about it. Today we re- remember the crucifixion of Christ. It's one of the cornerstones of our faith, the crucifixion. And, you know, that Jesus, the Son of God, the, the Christ, the Messiah, came to this earth and died for us, the perfect Lamb of God. It takes away the sins of the world. He took our sins on his shoulders, his physical body. He took our punishment. It's incredible. Uh, His sacrifice um, satisfies God's wrath on us. It should have been on us, and he takes it. Jesus takes it. He dies for us that we might be forgiven and pardoned. Wow. What a Messiah we have, don't we? Wow. It was his mission. His mission to die in our place. And... He was taken by force, but allowed it to happen. And he was arrested, but only when the time was right. He was nailed to the cross without a fight. He was blameless, yet he was accused. And he was abandoned by most, but every person's sin was on him. He was hated by his enemies, but love was his agenda. The agenda of Christ. He was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. Amen to that. I have a question, though. You know, can we just look at the crucifixion? Can we look at the cross simply from a historical view? Or should we look at it much, much deeper than that, than a historical view? Do we view the cross from a distance, maybe like a bystander was at the crucifixion? Or do we echo the words of the Roman soldier uh, who was at the foot of the cross in awe, who said, truly, 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 this is the Son of God. Should we do that? Yes, we should. You see, it's one thing to believe in the crucifixion, but it's another thing to personally identify with it. Now listen to the statement. It's one thing to believe in the crucifixion, but it's another thing to personally identify with it. As Christians, yeah, we we must see the cross, the crucifixion, and identify with it, connect with it. We must relate to it. So how do we do that? How do we relate to the crucifixion? How do we relate to the cross? That's what we're going to look at tonight. And I'm going to use a a scripture that's kind of the text for tonight, the main text, Galatians 2, 20. I'm going to look at the first half of it right now. And it says this, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Wow, what a powerful verse, isn't it? I've been crucified with Christ. That should be true of us. Crucified, but how do we do that? How are we crucified? What does it mean to be crucified with Christ? Well, let me tell you a little bit of my story about it. The last time Francie and I celebrated our anniversary, our marriage anniversary, uh, we celebrated 40 years of marriage. 40 years. Woo. But I tell you, it wasn't, it, was, it wasn't all good because about 12 years, now I'm serious, about 12 years we were separated. After being married about 12 years, we were legally separated. And, I mean, we lived apart, um, we had legal papers, and we were separated after about 12 years. And when I look back on it, the reason really, I think, was based on Colossians 1.17, and that says, and it's talking about Jesus, and it says that um, with him, everything holds together. 
Now, the opposite of that was our story. Without him, everything falls apart. Have you noticed that? That's a true statement, isn't it? Without Jesus, everything falls apart. And I think that's what happened because, see, back then we weren't Christ followers. Yeah, we were believers. We were believers, but we didn't live a Christian life. We weren't Christ followers. We didn't follow him at all. We were living a worldly life when we got married. I mean, back then, way back then, uh, a Jesus freak was something bad. You know? Here today, guess who's the Jesus freak today? <laughs> but we based everything on a worldly point of view. Everything was worldly. No, no spiritual life in it, really, at all. I mean, we went to church, guess what, on Easter and uh, Christmas. But we weren't living a, a, a Christian life at all. And what happened was we just kind of grew apart. And then, then something happened. Francie got involved in a Bible study. And one thing led to another, and we both started reconciling things. And that triangle, I'm telling you that, you've heard the triangle, it's true. As we, as we both started to approach God and seek God, we both started coming together. And, and praise God, in December 1986, we were baptized into Christ. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Ever since then, we've been blessed tremendously. Have you heard the word lavish in the Bible? God lavishes blessings on you. He just lav He's been lavin lavishing us and pouring blessings on us from that point on. Blessed us with a great family and uh, just been following him. We've just been following him. And our pivotal point was that baptism. That's what changed uh, Francie and I really. It transitioned us. You know, baptism is a lot of things. It's a, it's a rebirth. It's a washing. It's, it's a a point when you're immersed into Christ. It's when you, your sins are forgiven and the gift of the Holy Spirit is involved. And it's, a, it's amazing what happened to us after we were baptized into Christ. There, everything fell in place. And, and uh, what happened was it, it, it's all, it was this basic, pivotal transition point in our life. We're coming from a worldly view, baptism was that transition. And then we started walking with Christ from that point on. And, and if you look at that, a transition, baptism is a lot of things, but it's also a, a, a transition in your, in your life. It's supposed to be. And uh, you look at the baptism of Jesus. When Jesus was baptized, uh, before his baptism, he didn't try to get any disciples. He didn't try to discipleship anybody. After his baptism, he chose his disciples. Before his baptism, no miracles. After, all the miracles. Before, no ministry. After his baptism, into ministry immediately. So transition. Paul, same way. He was on a road to Damascus. He was killing Christians. Baptism was a great transition point right there. It's a point, a baptism is a point when, when we're buried uh, in Christ. We're, we're buried in him. And we're immersed in him. Now, when we're baptized... It's a death, burial, and a resurrection. In baptism, we crucify our old self. That's where this comes in. We're, we're supposed to be crucified with Christ. Well, the old ship Vicio died in 1986. Because we were baptized, buried with him in baptism, and we rose in a, in a newness of life. What a great thing that was as I look back on it. Colossians 2.12 talks about that. It says, for you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. Colossians 2.12. And with Him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. So this, our baptism was a death, burial, and resurrection for us. Not physical, spiritual. It's a huge spiritual event. Our death, burial, and resurrection and we parallel Christ. Death, burial, and resurrection. You know, our, our death, burial, and resurrection in baptism really is something that affects our hearts and our minds and our souls. It's a spiritual event. So being crucified with Christ, like we saw in that verse, is really my old self being crucified. 
It's my old self being crucified. It's dying to self and living for God, crucified with Christ, buried in the watery grave and, and then risen to new life, just as Jesus was risen to new life. Have you done that? The old Chip Vicchio died in 1986. The, the crucifixion of Jesus, and it, it enables us to, to crucify our old self. His death enable, enables us to die to self. And his resurrection enables us to resurrect with Christ into new life. Jesus Christ is the great enabler. He is the great enabler. Now, let's look at that passage again. Let's take Galatians 2, 20a, the first half of verse 20. And look at, I underlined it just to give some emphasis here. It says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me. See, that's the key. That's the key. Christ lives in me. That's how we're empowered to live. Because Christ lives in us. He transforms us. We walk in a new life. And Jesus um, is now with us. The Holy Spirit's in us. So Christ lives in us. That, that's how we're empowered to walk and to change and to go through this new life. And once we're connected to Christ... He lives in us and the Holy Spirit's with us. And, and that's what empowers us. So that's a key part of that verse. Now, let's look and expand this a little bit and look at the whole verse 20. And it says, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. This life I now live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. See, faith is the means by which we now continue our walk with Christ. And love is the motivator by which we are saved and what compels us to love Him and live for Him. He, when we realize what He's done for us, we're compelled. You know, I look back and, and I'm, as I look and reflect on my own life, you know, I came to understand who Jesus was in in. And I started to seek him and, and try to understand who he was. And then once I realized, though, that he died for me, once I started realizing that and, and what he really did for me personally, I wanted to know him a lot more. I wanted to know him better. I, I wanted to seek him more. And, and that led to coming to know him more fully. And it was a process of, of believing in him to the point where I was baptized and and I was now entering this father-child relationship with God. And that's what it's all about. Father-child relationship with God. And I began to see that happen. And when you see His love for us, it compels us. So yes, uh, it's all about He loved me and gave Himself for me. That's, that's our motive for, for following Him. So we're buried with Him. We're crucified with Him spiritually. We died of our old self. Crucified, we bury our old self like Christ was buried. We we rise to walk in a new life, like Christ was raised. So, what's that look like in somebody's life? What does new life look like? Well, there's there's a lot of things, but certainly a changed perspective, and I mean a different viewpoint by perspective, different viewpoint. Of how you look at things, how you look at people, your perspective begins to change and be transformed. And, and your priorities start to shift and change as you start walking with Christ. And, and you put God first. And everything falls in place. A changed priority, a changed attitude. Uh, you start um, looking at people with love instead of hate. Your, your attitude changes and how you vo view things and view people. It's a changed life. And you know what? It's a blessed life. It's a blessed life. Galatians 6, 14 says this, Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified. And the world's interest in me has also died. There's this whole shift of, perspective of, of priorities, of attitude. Everything kind of changes and, and the fruit of the Spirit kind of starts coming through. 
That's the new life. That's what new life, life looks like. The fruit of the Spirit, meaning love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Those things start to, to develop. And, and that happens in, in a, a new life. A life, an old life that's been crucified. Now, we need to personally identify with the crucifixion, of course, as well as the resurrection. You're going to get a lot more of that Sunday. But there's one phrase that stopped me in my tracks when I was reading this. There's one phrase that was kind of a, a signal to me. Let's look at um, Galatians 20 and 21, the next verse. And in the next verse, this phrase, I do not set aside the grace of God, stuck out to me when I I thought, wow, could I set aside the grace of God? Could I do that? And, and it was like a red flag saying, watch out, watch out, because um, there's a warning in there, for me anyway. And, and guess what the warning is? The warning is, warning, don't be a zombie Christian. Oh, you know, a zombie Christian. A zombie Christian is somebody that tries to bring back their old self. They try to bring back the, it's the walking dead. We're not supposed to do that. If you've been crucified with Christ, then that old self not only died, it was buried. Okay? Don't resurrect the old you. Don't resurrect that. Don't become a zombie Christian. Zombies are ugly. They're good for movies and TV, but for Christians, no, it doesn't work. No good for Christians. Now, a, a, sometimes though, sometimes we, we look and, and we catch ourselves, and, and, and out of our grave maybe comes our hand, you know, and just stomp that baby, you know. <laughs> but there are ways though, there are ways. I'm going to give you five ways on how to, how to avoid becoming a zombie Christian. There's five ways. And the first way to avoid becoming a walking dead, which you don't want to be doing, stay connected with the Word. Stay connected with the Word of God, with the Bible. That means read it. It's not hard to do, even if it's just a little bit. You don't have to, you know... Spend five, six hours a day doing that, although it would be pretty cool. But just a little bit, just keep in that habit, but stay connected with the Word. In Romans 12, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. How do you get transformed? The Bible, reading it, will transform you. I guarantee it. The second way to avoid becoming a zombie Christian Stay obedient to God's commands. Boy, that's important. And that's kind of up to us to do that. John 15.10, if you keep my commands, you will um, remain in my love. Well, that's a good thing. You won't be a zombie Christian. You'll remain in his love if you keep his commands. Be obedient. Right? It says, just as I have uh, kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. It's kind of a... Ongoing thing. Us, Jesus, God. We're... The third thing to avoid being a zombie, stay focused on Jesus. You've got to keep doing that. Colossians 3, 1 and 2, fantastic. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above not on earth, earthly things, for you died. See, that was crucified, right? your old self, for you died. And your life is now hidden with Christ and God. Stay focused on Jesus, and you won't try to raise up the old person. Number four, stay in tune with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Listen to this, Galatians 5, 20. Uh, 4 and 25, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. 
I've been crucified with Christ. We, we nail our old self, our, our old desires there. And then, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our life. Stay in tune with the Spirit. One more, stay in fellowship with believers. That's so important to do. We, can't, we just can't do it alone. We can't do it alone, but with encouragement and, and, and with each other, with brothers and sisters, we can do it. First John 1 John 1.7, But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. We need to stay in that. So those are the five ways to avoid being a zombie Christian. Really bad thing. And, you know, there's the walking dead. You see them a lot. You see zombie Christians a lot walking around. (laughs) So, can you relate to the cross tonight is the question. Can you personally relate to the crucifixion? you do that. Remember the statement at the beginning, it's, it's one thing to believe in the crucifixion. It's another thing to personally identify with it. Two things there that are... We need to personally identify it, connect with it, and relate to the crucifixion ourselves. So, I want to show you the, the verse one more time. Galatians 2.20. Fantastic verse. I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The question is, is that true for you? Can you take that verse and say, this is mine. This is my verse. Can you do that? Is the question. If not, the time is now to make it true. And if it's true, and you can take that verse and say, that's me, then praise be to the Son of God who gave himself for you. This has been a presentation of the Lewis Church of Christ. We are located at 15183 Coastal Highway, Milton, Delaware, three miles north of Lewis on Highway 1. Our service times are 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. 